right. Hi, I'm not going to lie to you, that threw me ever so slightly, that introduction. Okay, go for it. Okay, my name's Will, and I'm sure as soon as you saw someone was going to do a talk on the EU, you all hit the five-minute snooze button in your head. However, I'm going to ask you not to do that, because today I am going to attempt the impossible. I am going to try, well, impossible according to the tabloids anyway. I am going to put forward the argument for the UK staying in Europe. Now, never has an issue that matters so much been so one-sidedly portrayed as this one. So I'm going to try and put forward what you might call the counter-farage tonight. I'm miles ahead of my slides, but I'm going to crack on. My first point is peace. Peace is not Western Europe's natural state. For the last 5,000 years, there has been near constant war in the west of our continent. Now, the problem with this is, not only do European wars happen, but they also have a great ability to spread for the rest of the world. <laughs> now, oh God, that John Cleese has really put me off. <laughs> in the last 60 years, however, there hasn't been any wars in Western Europe. There has been peace. No longer is it even thinkable that France, Germany, and Britain could ever go to war with each other because they're no longer enemies, they're partners. 60, 60 years ago, in 1989, the Berlin Wall came down. And with that, well, with the help of David Hasselhoff, um, and with that, that freed Poland, Slovakia, Slovenia, and the Baltic states from communism. But they had no history of democracy. But thanks to the EU, they are now fully functioning states. They've got elected parliaments, fair judiciaries, there they are, and free market economies. This is not something we should underestimate. History will look back on us as fools if we believed that because we have had 60 years of peace, that's broken a pattern of 5,000 years of war. Economics. The EU is the single biggest market in the world. We have access to over half a billion people, and we can trade with them with no restrictions or tariffs. This is not something we should underestimate. Now, this makes other countries out from outside Europe to want to invest in us. For instance, let's take cars. So in Sunderland, Nissan's got a plant, and it's created 24,000 jobs. I know what you're thinking, it's Sunderland, who cares? So, let's think a little close to home. In Wales, there are two Toyota plants and they've created three and a half thousand jobs. Now, do we really believe that the corporate decision makers in Tokyo have decided to locate in Wales because they love our weather, or they love male voice choirs, or sleep museums, or they're just desperate to visit the big pit? No, no, no. Make no mistake, if we leave the EU, all of this external funding will also leave. Now, my next point, which should come up anytime soon, is power and global challenges. But it can basically be summed up by the rise of China. China is bloody massive, okay? We're gonna do a little bit of mental arithmetic for how big China is, okay? I want you to add up everyone in Western Europe. So that's Spain, Portugal, Germany, France, Scandinavia, okay? Loads of them, okay? I want you to add to that all of Australia. Now I want you to add to that all of New Zealand, that's both islands and the Shire and Middle Earth, okay? <laughs> I then want you to add to that all of South America. That's Peru, Bolivia, um, Argentina, Brazil, anything in light blue. Add to it Mexico, the US, and Canada. That is the population of China. To think that we, with 60 million people, can compete with these countries is a myth. The only way we're going to have a seat at the table is as part of a larger entity. Now... My final point is on the future, okay? Imagine if we really went for it with EU membership, or to quote notorious war criminal Tony Blair, put ourselves in the heart of Europe. <laughs> We've got so much, before I go that. <laughs> We've got so much going for us. We've got a great history. We've got a great culture. We've got, we're market leaders in engineering. We're market leaders in green energy. We've got Mo Farah, okay? We've got the BBC. We've even got Benedict Cumberbatch, okay? Thank you. Um, we are the only country in the EU, except Malta, but no one cares about Malta, who speak English as a first language. This is incredible. That is, right? yeah, Welsh as well. English is the international language of business. A lot of Eurosceptics will argue that being part of the EU will somehow reduce, reduce our national identity. But I say to them this, do you have so little faith in British values? Wales has been part of, um, was basically ruled by England for 500 years. Can you tell me on the dawn of the Six Nations that Welsh national identity and pride are somehow diminished? Not at all. We could be the leaders of an entire continent, but
but not through the strength of our arms, but through the courage of our convictions and the power of our ideals. If not, if we vote to leave, well, here's to being a small island on the edge of the Atlantic. Thank you very much.